What are the symptoms of mold sickness? Question to this answer is a difficult one. Mold sickness can be a great imitator. The symptoms could range from memory loss, foggy brain, muscle aches, fatigue, gut issues and many more. And in reality, the symptoms could be actually anything and can mask any illness. The difficult part of mold sickness is that by running regular tests not specific to mold mycotoxins, doctors dismiss this as normal allergy and in the worst case think these symptoms are in your head. So, if you are interested in this subject, we recommend you to stick around till the end of the video. Understanding and Combating Mold coming up. This video is brought to you by Good Health Corner. At Good Health Corner, we bring you research information which is easy to understand. And if you like what you see here, we request you to support us by clicking the like, subscribe and the bell icon. This will ensure you get notified every time we release a new video. Disclaimer: The health statements made in this video and the site are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease. These are solely for informational purposes. Always consult a doctor before implementing any treatment protocol. Now, coming back to the topic. Mold sickness is a chronic health issue and suppresses immunity. People are generally not aware of the implications of mold illness and the kind of damage it can do to the body. So it is extremely important to know what the sickness means and how to identify if you're affected. Let's understand what is mold. Molds are a type of fungus. And there are many different strains of mold that could be extremely wrecking to the human immune system. Mold infests and grows through spores which float in the air. And these spores are very tough and can persist in the most adverse conditions. Mold thrives in conditions that are moist, humid and warm. And in these environments, when the spores fall on a surface, it can start to grow. There are absolutely no surfaces on which mold cannot grow. For instance, it can grow on your clothes, furniture, glass, shoes, paper, absolutely everything. Now with this background, let's understand what is mold illness. Probably what people know about is mold allergy. And this is a softer version of mold illness. In mold allergy, the symptoms are limited to runny nose, itching on the skin, etc. These are triggered by dormant spores to which the immune system triggers an allergic reaction. Now this reaction becomes more aggravated when you live in a house with mold infestation leading to continuous exposure to mycotoxins. And this leads to a chronic disease state and symptoms which is called mold illness. The symptoms of mold sickness could be quite diverse and to the ordinary eyes might not even trigger the thought of mold immediately. This generally happens in old buildings where water damage resulted in mold infestation. And areas with high humidity and warm climate can also help mold to grow. Due to the constant moist surrounding and warm temperature, it becomes the ideal environment for mold to foster. And places which are generally impacted by mold are basements, lofts, shower area and kitchen. These areas generally have low ventilation along with condensation from steam or continuous water use. Air conditioners and HVAC systems are also mold breeding places and needs regular cleaning. Let's understand a few different types of molds. There are hundreds of different types of molds. And the ones listed here are the most common ones causing serious adverse health conditions if inhaled. And these are the most common offenders for symptoms of mold sickness. Stachybotrys. This is also known as a black mold and is one of the most toxic ones. Mycotoxins produced by stachybotrys can lead to bleeding of the lungs. These are normally found indoors and are very hard to detect as these hide behind walls, fall ceilings, etc. Aspergillus. These are green or greyish green looking and generally found on wooden surfaces. These are toxic in nature and can cause allergies, serious lung conditions and even hay fever. These produce mycotoxins which are extremely hazardous to health and which are also found on food items. Penicillium The harmful varieties of penicillium cause allergies and are particularly harmful to individuals with a weakened immune system. Trichoderma These spores contain enzymes that can destroy wood, paper and rot materials. This causes allergy and is found to be associated with liver and pulmonary infections. Fusarium this mostly grows on food products but also in other water damage materials. And the spores can cause lethal conditions like brain abscess and bone infections. This is a poison to the nervous system and can cause internal bleeding. Cladosporium. These spores can cause sore throat, itchy eyes and various other allergies and skin conditions. 
and it can cause asthma, sinusitis and lung infections. Now let's understand what are the toxins which moles produce. Moles produce two main types of toxins, mycotoxins and microbial volatile organic compounds also called MVOX. Let's understand mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are naturally produced by certain moles and are extremely harmful to human health. The adverse effects of mycotoxins can vary from acute poisoning to immune deficiency and can also lead to cancer. And these are found to be growing on foodstuffs like cereals, nuts and spices. Some of the common mycotoxins are as follows. Aflatoxins. This is the most common mycotoxin found in food and is produced by the aspergillus varieties. And these are cancerous to the liver as liver is the main target organ of this mycotoxin. Moreover, these mycotoxins can also cause major gastrointestinal tract dysfunction. Okra toxin A. Okra toxin is primarily produced by Aspergillus and Penicillium species. This mycotoxin targets the kidneys. And in addition to this, it is also an immunosuppressor and is known to cause liver inflammation. Trichothecenes. This is mainly produced by the Fusarium varieties. It is an immunosuppressor and causes symptoms of cough, sore throat, bloody nasal discharge and also fever when orally ingested. And it also hinders the absorption of glucose in the GI tract. Now let's come to the MVOX. In very simple terms, MVOX are the gases that are produced by the mold. And the musty odor that we recognize as moldy is caused by this MVOX. These are produced when these molds are germinating. These are not only disturbing to smell but are also toxic and causes an inflammatory reaction in the body. Now the question, how to understand if mold is making you sick? And honestly, this is a difficult question to answer. This will need you to analyze from when you started to see a decline in your health conditions and from what time symptoms of the sickness started to be noticed. Trace your step back to the time and see if you have made any major changes to your life which brought this change. For example, did you move house and did your symptoms start after settling in the new house? Or maybe you started a new job which brought this change. Once you have identified from when the symptoms started and have identified a location that could be a possible trigger, start looking for traces of mold infestation. Get a professional mold inspector to check your house if there are any issues. An ongoing decline in health would suggest that you are continually exposed to a toxic environment. In general, there are two places where we spend a large part of our day, our home and the second one being our work. Genetics also play a part here. It is seen that individuals with HLA-DR genes are 20% more prone to mold illnesses. Now let's understand some symptoms of mold sickness. Symptoms of mold sickness could manifest as any generic sickness like fatigue, brain fog, GI distress and so on and so forth. But if you are able to identify that these health issues started suddenly without any explainable reason and link to a change in place then that becomes a part of investigation. The toxins from mold trigger inflammatory response in the body which becomes chronic in nature with prolonged exposure. Inflammation is at the root of all chronic illnesses and it is the body's first reaction to foreign invaders. And in this situation if you are continually exposed to mycotoxins to which the body is creating antibodies catapults into a chronic inflammatory reaction. Mold causes oxidative stress which impairs cellular energy production and leads to energy deficiency and fatigue and the inflammation and the high oxidative stress consume the body leaving it tired and energyless. Let's understand Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome or CIRS. As the name suggests, it is a chronic state of inflammation and is caused by continued exposure to mold and other biotoxins. And this is also called a biotoxin illness. This is normally seen as a result of exposure to biotoxins emanating from water damaged buildings. And the onset of this illness is generally unexpected and sudden. Here is a list of symptoms that are associated with CIRS. From a general health perspective, you can have fatigue, weakness, aches, muscle cramps, sharp pain, joint pain, morning stiffness, etc. From a brain and mental health perspective, you can have headaches, memory issues, difficulty with focus concentration, difficulty in finding words, decreased assimilation of new knowledge, confusion, disorientation and mood swings. From an eyes or vision perspective, you can have light sensitivity, red eyes, blurred vision, tearing, etc. Respiratory issues can include sinus problems, cough, shortness of breath, etc. From a skin perspective, we can have skin sensitivity. 
Related to the nervous system can have sweats, especially night sweats, temperature regulations or dysregulation problems, excessive thirst despite a frequent water intake, static shocks, vertigo, dizziness, metallic tests, tremors, unusual pain, migraine, facial pain, etc. From a GI perspective, you can have abdominal pain, diarrhea, appetite swings. Urinary issues can be increased urination or nocturia. Now, how to diagnose mold toxicity? Mold sickness symptoms need a functional medicinal approach. And you're best to go to a mold literate doctor who can run panels to find out what are the underlying reasons for your illness and provide proper guidance and protocol. And doctors who are trained as per the Schumacher protocol is recommended. You can also visit the site Surviving Mold for a wealth of information on diagnosis and treatment protocols. But the first step is perhaps to run a mycotoxins test. And in addition to this, there are a few metabolic tests that can also point to mold illness. Your mold literate doctor should be able to guide you on this. Moreover, it is also recommended to conduct an ERMI test for your residents to understand if there are any significant exposure coming from the place where you stay. ERMI stands for Environmental Relative Moldiness Index and it covers 36 species of molds. You can also do a Hertzme test which does the same as ERMI but covers only 5 most toxic mold strains. Hertzme is cheaper, but if a mold illness is suspected, it is best to do an ERMI. The benefits outweigh the extra cost involved. And if it is found that there is a significant exposure coming from the residence, then there are two options. First, if possible, change the residence. Now if this is not possible, then call for a professional mold remediation company for a thorough mold remediation. If you remember, we said that mold spores, they travel in the air and remain suspended. So it can be literally anywhere in the house, from your clothes, bed, furniture, books, etc. So, in a situation if you are changing house, it is highly recommended to leave all of these in the old house and get new furniture, etc. for the new house. Clothes could be washed in hot water with mold disinfectants. But if the same furniture is brought to the new house, the spores which are attached to these will start new mold infestation in the new house. Now how do we treat mold? Again, perhaps I'm repeating myself here, a functional medicinal approach is required to treat mold. Mold needs to be detoxified from the body and this will require your body's detoxification and drainage system support. Along with this, binders are important to bind to the mycotoxins and moving it out of the body. Let's understand some binders. Cholestyramin or CSM. CSM is a prescription medicine used for lowering cholesterol and it also works as a binding agent for biotoxins. CSM binds strongly to biotoxins of mold and lime and prevents it from being reabsorbed in the gut and safely excretes them. And it can remove biotoxins from the tissues. Velcol Velcol is another prescription medicine and can be used for binding to biotoxins in the gut and safely excreting them from the body. It is generally prescribed for sensitive individuals who cannot tolerate CSM. And it is also considered to be less effective as compared to CSM. Bentonite clay Bentonite clay originates from volcanic ash and has the ability to bind to biotoxins, heavy metals and other harmful substances. It is also antibacterial and antiviral in nature. Activated charcoal Activated charcoal is also an effective biotoxin binder. It has excellent safety records and is used extensively for mopping up unwanted substances from the gut. Chlorella Chlorella is a blue-green algae and is specifically used to bind to heavy metals and excrete them from the body. And this could be also utilized in a protocol to detox mold. Mold and heavy metals go hand in hand, and chlorella can help to make the other supplements more effective. Zeolite Zeolites are also good binders of biotoxins. And in addition to biotoxins, it also binds to heavy metals. A good addition to have in the protocol. Pectin Pectin is a supplement made from fruits like apples, grapefruits, etc and it is effective in mopping up biotoxins in the gut. It is a gentler binder than all of the above and also binds weakly with metals. Let's look at some other interventions. Glucuronidation Glucuronidation is a detox reaction where the body attaches glucuronic acid to toxic molecules including mold and detoxifies them from the body via urine or bile. So supplementing with calcium deglucurate helps in this process. It also protects the liver. Glutathione Glutathione is the body's super antioxidant and it helps to push toxins out from the cells. Having glutathione in the supplementation program helps to remove the biotoxins from the cells and helping the binders to bind to these biotoxins in the gut 
and remove them from the body. You can either take supplements which can help in the production of glutathione or take glutathione as a supplement itself. And if you're taking the latter, consider taking liposomal varieties, skin patches or suppositories for better absorption. Sauna Saunas are great for detoxifying. And nowadays, it is possible to get some good home units. If space is a constraint, then going to a spa for sauna is a great option. Now let's understand how can you support your home to fight mold. Having an air filter. Having a good air filter at home is an important and essential addition to fight mold sickness. And having one which can neutralize the mold spores in the air helps to keep clean air in which you breathe. Second, dehumidifier. This is also an important and essential addition. As we all know, mold grows in hot and humid places. So by using a dehumidifier to keep the relative humidity below 40% ensures that mold doesn't get the humid environment for growth. Number 3. Stopping Wi-Fi Wi-Fi In addition to causing disruption to your natural cellular communication by the artificial frequencies, has also shown that mold can grow 600% more in a Wi-Fi environment. Converting the internet to a hardwired one is not difficult. You can get some power line starter kits that can help to transmit internet signals through your electrical power lines without the need to lay down dedicated internet ports. Number 4. Mold Disinfectants And there are many natural and chemical mold disinfectants that helps to neutralize mold at home. For your convenience, we have left a link to various products in the description of the video below. We use them and find them to be extremely helpful in fighting mold and we hope you find them useful too. To sum up, if you are having an unexpected downturn in your health condition then it is advisable to check if mold is at the root of the issue. Without wasting any time, go to a functional medicine doctor and get started. Be observant if you get any musty smell or if you see any black patches in your house. If you have had any water damage, get it remediated immediately and if possible, move to a new location with new furniture. Start a supplementation protocol to support the body's detoxification and start with some inexpensive binders like activated charcoal before you get your appointment with the doctor. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more such videos, we recommend you to subscribe to our channel and give a thumbs up to this. A little bit of encouragement from you will go a long way for us. Thank you and we hope to see you again. Bye for now.